Hey guys, it's Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric. It is um, first week of June in 2023. Uh, we should be adopting our new 2023 20, code now. I uh, didn't see a ton of residential changes for services. I think all that um, intensity happened basically uh, in 2020 um, for your disconnects outside and uh, an extra ground rod was added in 2017. Um, but your meet your electrical companies have their own requirements too, so keep that in mind. Uh, Loveland is now not allowing any more overhead services to be changed out, even if it's 100, 150, or 200 amp. Um, so basically, in a nutshell, uh, this video for my SEO guy. Um, I apologize, guys. Every time there's a dog, a plane, or a weed eater, trash truck, or a lawnmower, I'll do my best to talk up. Um, but this is going to be about if I added a standby generator switch, this is also going to have, and, and it's not, it's really just more of a, a disconnect switch, if you will, a transfer switch, but it's manually done. It's not done by like Genrack, which has an automatic transfer. And those systems are anywhere from 20 to $30,000 for your whole house to be done. This is an alternative if you have a 7,400 watt generator or a 9400 or even you could go up to a 12,000 watt generator and it's going to be one that you roll up and you twist lock I'll show you at the end of the video what he's doing so when I got here all the I saw and this house is about 20 2015 so it's about seven eight years old but all that was here was just this box okay emergency service disconnect and inside of it it's just a 200 amp switch okay now, we added more stuff to this by us flexing down. A lot of you in the video are gonna say, wow, that's a lot of stuff. It is. But keep in mind that this side through here, you're not allowed to knock out and punch any power out. So look at the neighbor right here, two feet away. Same thing, that's how it looked when I got here. Now, I left room for solar for an inverter right in here to come into the side of this somehow here i wish these guys would have had their boxes a lot lower but it's okay i worked around it this three quarter is for an rv plug they ask me for that rv right there in case friends come over you're going to want a four wire 50 amp this is no different than a tesla plug they could do a tesla plug here okay now as far as this one inch flex, well, that one went to my transfer switch. This is my line on into my auxiliary right here, okay? And that this was definitely just a simple 120 volt plug to trickle charge the RV. If power goes out, they can do it on their generator too. So this was a roll up generator switch. 7400 and 9400 watt rated up to 50 amp twist locked four wire by hubble okay that fed in with a myers hub and an lb and went right into my switch and so on the back of the switch it tells you how to wire this up okay it also states that this is only 100 amp rated so walking into this Here's my neutrals, here's my line, here's my load, and here's my auxiliary, okay? So that one inch came in and fed off of a 100 amp breaker right here, and I did tag it purple so I knew it was lying in. The auxiliary I did brown on both sides, as well as the black, red, and the white. And then I did blue just to indicate going over here. This is my new sub panel if you will or my emergency service panel i have a surge protector on here and i could only fit a certain amount of spots in this panel now most of the stuff that we transferred over is very minimal the load is not that large it's going to be family room my new 120 volt rv plug some refrigerator plugs 
dishwasher smoke detectors were done separate we did that kitchen lighting sump pump definitely do garage door opener yes master bedroom family room kitchen counter plugs microwave and they had a gas oven so and we also had a hot water heater that needed a 110 gfi and a furnace okay i did not do ac i didn't do an electric range and i didn't do a electric car if they wanted to do car they could do it on the 120 it just takes a while so this ronco switch is 100 amp rated this panel is 125 amp rated i fed it with number two copper thw and dash two rating 90 degrees celsius rating but in 110.14 c if it's not if it's larger than a number one you can go to your 75 degrees celsius if it's not you're supposed to stick to the lower rating so number two is not really worth then technically 130 amp it's more 110 but any which way it's plenty of power my weakest link is my generator that's a twist lock at 50 amp six gauge okay? but when it's running it's not running that heavy of a load so you got to know that article 220.42 i also looked in article 702 for uh, gen uh it's going to be um i don't want to quote that wrong guys 4.5 is my generators which are twist lock smaller type 702 is gonna fall under it's not a legally required system so it's gonna be inner it's a very small article it's gonna be underneath optional standby system okay and so that's what that's gonna fall under but that also refers you in 702 to 445 which is gonna be our generators to know our load 445.17 that refers me also to 430.247 for full load current ampers and dc current motors which is basically what a generator does when it's inverting and then it's going to refer me also to 310.16 for my feeders and 310.15 how many current carrying conductors in a conduit which is kind of bs with something like this okay but here's my rating on my wire 310.16 and then it also referred me in 250.102c which is going to be under main bonding jumper sizing 250.122 for breaker sizing and 250.66 for um power feeding in what's the size basically number eight to number six on my grounding and then and yeah right there in 250.36 it also refers in 250.50 and 53 if you're doing a grounding bond jumper so in a nutshell this neutral and these ground are supposed to be separated on this generator switch in this panel i did add a ground bar because it didn't come with it I did size my number 10s coming in this flex because this is a rubber flex so there is no ground you have to have a ground wire in it your neutrals i did have more like 12 current carrying conductors if you count my neutrals what i do not like oh and i do have two surge protectors one here and one stab here okay two separate systems but it feeds what i like about this switch is when it connects guess what my arc fault breakers still have their neutral some of you are getting those six circuit spaces off of Amazon and they're not a bad system for an older home. But on a newer home like this, when you have to have your neutrals, you still have to feed your neutral through and identify your circuits, which we did have to trace those circuits in the house so we know what we're needing. So guys, anyways, um, I would not suggest to wire this up yourself. Um, I know it doesn't look as clean as possible, but we didn't have enough space with the fence, with the data, future solar, and this whole side was open. So we just decided to swag it all over this way. But yeah, line in, power into my emergency panel from my auxiliary through this contact. And then so if power goes off to the house here, guess what? We're gonna hit that auxiliary switch, hook up our generator, power this over and everything will be on. And even if power does come back on from the power company, it will not hurt anything that you have connected because of this simple switch. I trust that more than um, a bunch of little 
small auxiliary switches so this is in my opinion the best way to wire this but yeah unfortunately we did have to feather those conduits I did do a one inch on all that so is to make sure I had plenty of space to push through um, and then yeah I probably could have done this in a number four but I did it in a number two in case they want to upsize this to a 12,000 watt generator extend the box and do number fours in here then I could probably go up to uh, probably 70 80 amps on the generator on that to feed it through which in that case I still can't change the load because I don't have enough breaker slots if I wasn't doing arc fault breakers with these neutrals then I wouldn't have to worry about it I did not mix up my neutrals because if you do and when you do it will trip here or there and you have to reset and it'll keep tripping until you correct your issue on the neutral a lot of you guys don't think residential is difficult. I do. Uh, I like it because it's all about the neutral in our code, protecting the neutral through the arc fault, the DF breaker, etc. And so making sure that when you see a system like this, if I nipple this, for instance, we don't have to worry about how many current carrying conductors, but 310.15B talks about how the neutrals are current carrying, so you're still trying to protect that. But look how much space I have in a one inch. If I could have done a third one inch, I probably would have and made sure I didn't break that rule because it has to be under 10. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. Um, hopefully this will help you out. But yeah, this is basically going to be a manual transfer switch at your house. But yet an RV plug that someone can use on line side. And if power goes out, you can still trickle charge off of your emergency panel right here on this 120 volt with the auxiliary switch. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.